Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our eSword tutorial series and talk about the best free resources for Bible study that you can find already on eSword. How you can find them, download them, and start using them today. Now, we're not going to be actually talking about how to use each individual resource. I'm going to do those in other separate videos. But for now, let's open up eSword, and we've got our uh, Bible study program open here. Now, you can see that I've already got some commentaries over here, right? I've got some Schofield notes, Treasury of David, which is Spurgeon's commentary on Psalms, uh, Matthew Henry, I think that might have came already, um, F.B. Meyer, and then TSK cross-references, and we're going to get to um, that in just a second. Now, just for your reference, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, but it's also the opinion of a lot of guys that I respect and a lot of preachers that I really like. The, the most important Bible study resource for your Bible study, hands down, is the Bible. That's all you need to study the Bible. You need the Bible. Now, eSword is helpful because I can search the Bible, right? I can study to show myself approved. I can search the individual words. I can cross-reference comparing things spiritual with things spiritual here a little, there a little, and actually exegete what the Bible says instead of just opening a commentary from step one and eisegeting or inserting what I think the Bible says into it. You always want to just start with the Bible. But there are obviously resources that can help us. The most important resources, in my opinion, for studying the Bible are a Strong's Concordance, the Treasury of Scriptural Knowledge, which I'm just going to call the TSK for short, Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, the TSK, and Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Those are the most important resources other than your old KJV Bible for studying the Bible. And so how can I find those? Well, all of those things are in the public domain, and so I can install them for free on eSword. How do I do that? If I go up here to my menus and I look at tools, I've got dictionary, commentary, but what I want to do is go to download, okay? Now, if I go to Bibles, obviously that's going to let you download whatever Bible you want. Now, not all of these are free, of course, because some Bibles have copyrights on them. And so you can see the one that I use doesn't have a copyright. The King James Version is in the public domain, and so I've got that installed already. But look at these tabs that we have up here, okay? Bibles, commentaries, dictionaries, devotions, graphics, reference books. These are all things that you can download. So if I go over here to commentaries, look at all of these commentaries that are available. Now there's a premium section down here. You can purchase some things. I've never actually done that. And so I, I don't know how to actually purchase them. I'm sure that it's fairly simple. But what we're going to do is we're just going to start with the free ones. Okay. Now look at these free commentaries that are available. These are all things, if you look under the comments, that are in the public domain. And that's how, now this one right here, copyright 2020, used by permission. So uh, David Guzik's Enduring Word Commentary that's being used by permission with eSword. But most of these things are going to be old works that are uh, in the public domain. For instance, these Matthew Henry commentaries that are from the 1700s, right? The Schofield Reference Bible Notes from 1917. Uh, the Treasury of David by Spurgeon, 1800s. Uh, and most importantly, the TSK, the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, published in the 1800s. It's in the public domain. Now, I already have these installed on this computer, so let's just pick a different one, right? So the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge um, is the most important commentary, in my opinion. Um, it's not technically a commentary, but it is under the commentaries, so make sure you download that one. But let's just pick one that I don't have download. Let's go to the Cambridge Bible Notes, okay? So we're going to go to this one. I'm going to click on the link, and it's going to go down here and start automatically downloading. Now, I could put as many of these as I want, and I could hit download and hit start and stop, but all you have to do is click on the hyperlink of the one that you want, and it's going to start downloading it. See, now the Cambridge Bible says that it's installed. Uh, let's go up here to John Darby Notes. I can click on John Darby's synopsis of the Bible. I click on it. It automatically goes down here and starts downloading on its own. That's all I have to do. Click on the link of the one that you want, and it starts to download it automatically. Let's go over to dictionaries. 
dictionaries. The one that I want the most is Webster's 1828. If you aren't aware of Webster's 1828, that was the dictionary made by Noah Webster in the 19th century, at the beginning of the 19th century, using the English that the King James Bible used when it was translated, okay? And so Webster's 1828, not only is it going to define those older words that are a little bit more archaic for our 21st century uh, brains, but it's also going to use the scripture in its definition because Noah Webster was a Christian. And so you want Webster's 1828. You can have that in a book form, of course. You can you can access that just on Google. Uh, you know what I mean? There's websites dedicated to Webster's 1828 dictionary, but I can download it and have it in eSword, and I use that all the time. And so make sure that you have that one. I can also make sure that I've got Strong's downloaded right here, as you can see. Uh, whatever Smith's Bible Dictionary is, I can have the King James Concordance right here. And so you can download all of those. Let's just pick one. Um, I don't even know half of these guys. I'm just a normal guy, right? I don't need Greek definitions. I don't speak Greek. Let's do whatever Knave's Topical Bible is. Click on that. It goes down here. Automatically starts downloading as we've seen before. So make sure you get Webster's 1828 and the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. I can go to Devotions. If that's what you're into, you're not, uh, maybe you're not uh, preparing messages, but you want some devotions. Well, I've got Morning and Evening by Charles Spurgeon already in here, if you're aware of those comment, uh, commentary, those devotions. Um, let's see what else. There's Our Daily Walk by F.B. Meyer, um, Streams in the Desert, The Bent Knee Time by Samuel D. Gordon. I'm not going to pretend like I've heard of all of these guys, but you can download any of those that you want, just like... Uh, the other ones, and there's some available that are premium for purchase as well. Let's go over here to graphics. Graphics. Now look at these. I can download the Clarence Larkin Book of Charts. Why? It's in the public domain that was published in the early 20th century. So I can download those charts from Dispensational Truth. I can download classic Bible maps. I can download a historical atlas. Let's download the American Bible Society maps. How about that? Click on it, it starts downloading immediately, and I've got that available. Go through these, guys. Download everything that you want. Uh, reference books, here you go. What else do we have? Now, these are just going to be more uh, old books in the public domain that uh, are maybe more general. So here you've got some like Arthur Pink books. Um, let's see who else. John Fo Fox's Book of Martyrs. Let's download Fox's Book of Martyrs. Now, typically, I'm not going to read on my computer. I'm going to read my actual hard copy book of Fox's Book of Martyrs, or maybe I'd prefer to read it on my tablet, but if I wanted to, I could read it here in eSword. That's not something that only um, Logos can do. And then I can, here's the important part, I can search in Fox's Book of Martyrs for things that I want to use. So say that I'm looking for a quote or I'm looking for a specific uh, mention of a person or a place or an event, and I want to use that in my sermon or my Bible study, I can search those references, right? Uh, there's works uh, by all these guys. Here you go. E.M. Bounds, one of my favorite authors, Prayer and Praying Men. E.M. Bounds, written in the early 19th century, public domain. A.W. Tozer, Knowledge of the Holy. It's available. Um, what else do we have here? Andrew Murray, more E.M. Bounds, Essentials of Prayer. Uh, Pursuit of God, A.W. Tozer. Uh, Power Through Prayer, I'm sure is in here somewhere. It's my favorite book by E.M. Bounds. Um, all of these things, The Weapon of Prayer. Um, you can download these for free because they're already in the public domain. Okay, so once you've got all your downloads and what you want, we close out of here. And it's going to make us restart to see all that we've added. So let me do that, and I'll come back to you here in a second. All right, I've restarted eSword, and so we should see everything that we've added. Now up here in my commentaries, I've got all of these different tabs, and I can see these things that I added, all of these different commentaries that are available. Of course, I can go up here to the commentary tab in my in my eSword window, the main window, and I can see display book comments, display chapter comments, uh, extended search, search. Let's go to search. And this is going to be just like the Bible search, but now this is the commentary search, right? I go here, pick my commentary. And go to uh, Schofield Notes, search for all the words, the same way to use the search function, and let's just search sin. And see how Schofield has to say about sin. All of these notes. See that? So you can actually search the individual commentaries. But what I think is the most practical practical way to use commentaries is when you're using doing your study, we're in 2 Timothy 2, let's go to verse 2.15, and now the, mo the one that I use the most often 
is the treasury of scriptural knowledge. I'll do a different video on how to use the treasury of scripture knowledge. But notice over here when I click on that tab, it's already bringing up the references for 2 Timothy 2. I can do the same thing. No Schofield notes here. That's interesting. Uh, treasury of David, of course, that's about the Psalms. But I can go to John Darby, the Cambridge Bible, Matthew Henry, and I can see all these notes um, that I want. Okay. Now, the other thing is the dictionary tab. I've got it over here. If I hover over it, I can see all of my dictionaries. Webster's is the important one. And uh, I will do, obviously, a video on how to use the different dictionaries uh, and how to use Webster's 1828. But I just wanted you to see that that's where they're at. I've got my dictionaries tab, and these are all of my dictionaries right here at my disposal. So I'm going to click out of here and let that go back in. But I've got my commentaries. Now, what about those other books? I don't have tabs for those. Well, if I go up here to Tools, and I can go to my Graphics Viewer, and I can pick, oh, there you go, American Bible Society Maps, Classic Maps, and my Larkin. Here you go. Here's my Larkin charts. I can drag those around. Let's close that out and go back up to tools. Go to reference library. And here you go. Here's my books in reference library, right? So I only have Fox's Book of Martyrs installed, but I can go to chapter one and I can start reading. Now, if I go over here to my binoculars, I can search it just like I was showing you earlier. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Let's search for William Tyndale. We want to see about he died. And there you go. Chapter 12. He's also mentioned in 14 and 16, but I can read about William Tyndale and his life and how he was burned at the stake. And I can find the famous uh, quote. Um, well, let's just do this. Uh, Tyndale open, uh, maybe not the word Tyndale, but uh, William Tyndale, when he's uh, getting ready to be burned at the stake, he says, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. So let's search open King England. And... Search for, well, let's do exact phrase. Open the king of England's, here it is right here in chapter 12. Lord, open the king of England's eyes is what he cried before being burned at the stake. And as we know, that was in AD 1536. And less than a century later, his prayers would be answered as the King James Bible would begin to be translated. So, that's how you can view your references and your books by going up to the eSword reference library. Go back up here to tools and you can see everything that you have. If you have devotions downloaded, prayer requests, scripture, memory, all of those things. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you guys to see all of the free re resources. I, I've met a lot of people and I've talked to people online who had no idea that they could actually use the TSK and their Strong's Concordance and and uh, and Webster's 1828 even within eSword. Those are all available for free. Download all of them if you want to. Now, I'm going to show you in the coming videos in the series how to use the most important ones in my opinion. So we're going to see how to use Strong's numbers to look up uh, words throughout the Bible using the Strong's Concordance. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to use Webster's 1828, which is pretty simple in here, um, but why it's so important. If you've, if you've never considered using Webster's 1828, I'm going to show you why and how to do that. And then also how to use uh, the treasury of scripture knowledge as well. So make sure you come back and look for those, hit the notification bell, and make sure you subscribe so that you see those videos when they come. Thanks for being with me this time. See you next time. God bless.